welcome very much um, everyone again. Thanks very much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, we want to present you a tool that we are currently working on and you've already received a little bit of extra documentation. Um, so we'll do a little bit of introduction right now and then later on we will change into the breakout room as uh, announced to do the actual testing. Uh, this is just due to the fact that we are still kind of on a very um, low uh, size and volume where the tool is currently located. So uh, we want to make sure that everyone who is testing it at the same time can actually get results. So we are trying to keep the numbers um, relatively restricted. So what we're going to do in the main session is just giving you a background and an introduction to the tool and some notes on testing the tool. We will be sharing the link to the tool with everyone who has registered. So uh, even if you um, cannot join us in the regular route later on, you will be able to kind of test the tool on your own time if you want that. Um, and we would, of course, welcome any feedback that you uh, can give us either during the session or also uh, later on. And um, then we go into the free testing round where you can all test uh, by yourselves. Uh, but of course, um, Marta Costas and I will be around and we'll try to answer any questions that you might have. Um, in terms of questions, one other thing that we need to mention is that the main developer of this tool, unfortunately, um, had to cancel his participation uh, due to personal reasons uh, on short notice. So he can't be with us today, but uh, if there are any questions that you have that we can't answer, we will take note of them and we will get back to you as soon as we had a possibility to check in with him. So what's the background for developing the automated topic detection tool? Um, it all starts with controlled access terms in archives and the question of when they are assigned um, and how they are assigned and why. Um, ideally, all of that happens when the archivist um, is creating the descriptive metadata. In reality, although um, we know that across the European continent, at least, it's not always part of the archival description tradition. Um, and even if controlled access terms are included, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are from controlled vocabulary. So all these questions with regard to linked open data and making things more accessible um, are a little bit of a gray area, so to say. Um, and the other thing is the question of where these um, control access terms are actually assigned. And often we find situations where we have them only on the collection level, but not necessarily with each and every item that is part of the collection. So that, of course, also makes it a little bit tricky to receive, retrieve that information for the single records. Similarly is the situation with regard to uh, whether that is a possibility to actually work with controlled access terms in archival systems as they are currently on the market. Ideally, you will have kind of designated fields for something like subject headings or named entities that are related to the archival documents that you're describing. Um, and in, in the ideal world, these would also allow for integration of controlled vocabularies and the addition of URIs from linked data vocabularies. In reality, however, we know that these designated fields are not always available, if at all. Um, and if they are available, they are sometimes missing the connection to the vocabulary. So it's essentially kind of just a list of terms that the archivist can create as they go along, but there's no control behind this. And so it can be anything essentially. And the last part that specifically Archives Portal Europe is looking at is the encoding of archival metadata. So for everyone who's not familiar with Archives Portal Europe, um, we integrate metadata from all across the continent um, and also from archives that are related to Europe but not located in, in Europe. Um, and we do that based on international archival standards, mainly the standard encoded archival description. So that's the metadata that we are currently talking about. And while there are designated fields in the EAD format, uh, and there is a possibility to include uh, URIs uh, alongside with literals in these fields, they are not, of, not always used, but um, 
named entities, for example, are part of longer descriptive texts. Um, or they might only be giving the name but don't include links, even though the possibility is there. So that's essentially what we are finding when we get the data from our content providers. What we have been trying to do in Arca Support Europe in order to kind of bridge this gap, so to say, is to create a list of predefined topics that we can use centrally um, and that we enable our partners to link to. And I just want to explain a little bit um, how this linking happens. Um, so essentially the predefined list that we have is taken from the UNESCO thesaurus with some editions from the UK archival thesaurus as we wanted to have an English basis, so to say. But we have these topic labels translated by our network partners. Uh, so we have a variety of languages available in the user interface of the portal. And there are two ways how our partners can connect to these central topics at the moment. Um, the ideal situation is that there are already subject headings somewhere in the metadata. And our partners, while preparing the data for ingest, can then say, OK, these are the list of terms that we have in our data, and they relate to this central topic. And they can make this connection, which will lead to the fact that when someone searches via this topic in the front end, um, they will get everything that has this connection made, so to say. The other possibility is to create something that is called a source guide. And that essentially is um, a selection of specific collections in the archives that are already tailored towards a specific topic. And then you have the possibility to include this whole source guide and link it to a specific topic that we have in the central system. And with this, every collection and every item in every collection that is linked to the source guide will also be linked to the topic. In both cases, however, um, this is a completely manual process at the moment. And that essentially leads to the fact that uh, we've got a relatively inconsistent coverage of the topics if they are used at all at the moment. Uh, so we've got predominantly material from France that is tagged with topics. And then Germany kind of comes at, uh, with, with, a, with a relatively big gap as uh, in second place. And then we've got uh, a few countries who might have kind of related uh, their material to one specific topic that they wanted to highlight. Um, but it gives a relatively inconsistent picture, and that is what we wanted to address with the tool that we will be presenting to you um, in this session today. So what does this tool include and what does it do? Um, the idea is to identify material that is not yet tagged with a specific topic, but in some way related to it. Um, and to do that by not requiring subject headings to be already available in the metadata, but essentially looking into the descriptive information, for example, the title or the content summary, and deriving that information about the topic relation from there. And the idea is that this would be kind of an extension to the current keyword search that the portal already has, and could ideally be used by users but also by our content providers to improve their metadata. At the moment, and that's also what we mentioned in the documentation that we sent to you beforehand, um, the tool only works with a relatively small sample. So it's around 675,000 documents that are included um, and um, they cover 12 topics. So it's a relatively small sample leaning towards specific subjects. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can only find information on these subjects, but you might also be able to find uh, information on other subjects. But there's more probability for these subjects to appear in, in the results. And in terms of the languages covered due to the fact that we currently have predominantly tagging from France and Germany, the content that is included in the tool also is predominantly in French and German. Uh, we also have some documents in Finnish, Latvian and Polish. 
and for searching you can use a range of other languages um, english hebrew italian russian slovenian spanish and swedish at the moment there are two types of searches that the tool currently supports uh, one is the concept search and that is using fast text word embeddings uh, what that means is that we essentially are trying to capture the meaning of the document's content and we are assigning a mathematical value to that meaning um, and then we've pre-trained the tool on wikipedia and aligned this pre-training in a common cross-lingual semantic space uh, which we have taken essentially by the project news uh, which was done in the context of facebook originally uh, but provides us with a relatively broad array of languages that are already covered um, and we've been adding a few languages that weren't covered but that we have in our context Similarly, we are also trying to represent the user query, so the keywords that you're entering as cross-lingual word em embedding, uh, and that gives us kind of a reference to compare with whatever is the value that we have assigned to specific, uh, to specific documents. So essentially what we are comparing is the mathematical representation, the vector um, of the document and of the search query, um, and that gives us a possibility to make a statement about the similarity of both of them and a potential semantic connection. Next to that, we also have an entity search. Um, so this is specifically looking for persons, organizations, places, so kind of the typical entities that you might um, relate to in named entity recognition contexts. Um, but as we are linking this to Wikidata, essentially everything that has a Wikipedia page is treated as an entity. So that also kind of covers something that is more in the area of a subject or of a period or of an event. And what we are doing in the entity search is that we are essentially kind of retrieving name variations in other languages than the language um, that the user has given us for the search. Um, and also in other languages uh, than the ones that are under study. So um, if Wikidata includes something on, I don't know, Norwegian, for example, which we don't cover at the moment in our data set, um, then we would also include that information. Um, there's also a little bit of pre-processing going on in name variations. So for example, if you compare Wikipedia pages on the same person, uh, you will sometimes find life dates um, as part of the entity um, and in other languages these life dates are not there um, so this is something that we try to balance in the pre-processing and we are essentially searching for all name variations that we have retrieved and whether they occur in the data set how does the tool look like and this is the point where i give the floor to marta um, maybe instead of changing who presents, um, I'll just wait for your command yeah. to yeah. the slide. Um, so this is the interface as you see it. Uh, it's a very simple um, query search where you first put the keywords, you select the language um, of the keywords. Um, it may sometimes be obvious, it may sometimes be not, because one word is written the same, particularly names in, in many different languages. Um, you can then choose whether you want to search as concept or entity. Um, and then you can select how many results you want to see. Uh, we usually suggest to leave the, um, at 10, but it can be 20, it can be 15, it can be 17, you can choose the freely the number. Um, we then have the option to select a, a broad entity mentioned search, which means that it will broaden the research um, for the name of the entities in all languages available in Wikipedia. So it only works when you search with, uh, uh, with entity. Uh, now about keywords, just a few, a few extra words. Um, you can put one or more. Um, the default will be that how many, whatever keywords you put uh, it will search for every single keyword um, of your key we carry um, 
wherever they appear in the description. So if you search for Napoleon Bonaparte, then you have Napoleon here and Bonaparte uh, three lines below. It will search, it will give you the results only if both of them are there. Um, this is the default, but then you can use uh, very simple Boolean operators. Um, so we have and, or, and not, I think we can use, or uh, maybe you, we, 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 we cannot use it right now, um, but usually you can. So it's and, or, and not, and uh, uh, the quotation marks, which will treat the keywords, uh, both more than one word as one string. So if you want to have only results to have Napoleon Bonaparte together, um, we, we, we will, you can filter them down. Um, thanks to this. Now, at the moment, the reason why that confusion and not is that <laughs> um, at the moment uh, the results will only be shown when uh, both keywords are present in the in the um, in the text. This is a glitch that we are trying uh, that we are trying to solve. But if you use Boolean operators, um, sorry, Kirsten, correct me if I'm wrong if I'm saying this correctly. But it will only um, it will only provide results when both uh, if you use more than one keywords, when both of them will be available somewhere in the search. Um, okay, excellent. So this, this is one of the problems we are, we are trying to solve. I just wanted to make um, everyone aware. I think we can go to the next slide. So when you run research, it could take a while um, because um, Particularly with entities, it has to go through the various data sets that, that Kirsten described. Um, and we have also uh, constraints in terms of how powerful the, the machine where uh, it's currently running is. Um, but so 10, as I said, it's a usual number that we will use now for testing. Um, you can see how many results you want to see, but it could be less, it could be zero. Uh, and particularly, again, for entity search, that is a bit more tricky because it's more specific to the search term in particular. So if you can go to the next slide. So this is how the results look once you once the machine has run its course. First of all, you can download the results as uh, um, CSV. So that's always uh, that's always useful if you want to keep. Uh, uh, if you go to keep uh, uh, records of all the results to see, um, and then you will see the name, uh, uh, the name of the file, the name of the description, the topic to which that description is already applied. Let's remember that for now, the portion of the um, the portion of the Archives Portal Europe repository where the machine uh, runs is the selected topics, um, so selected documents that are already targeted with selected documents. So this is the topics where they were already run. Then we have the description of the content um, where you see highlighted the words that are the most uh, um, closer and representative for the type of query uh, that you search. So they have a semantic meaning that is similar um, to those of the of the, of the query or, or of a keyword or keywords that you have selected, and the darkest they are, the the, the most related they are. Uh, then you have a country where the specific finding it, the specific description comes from. It most most of the time that also uh, matches the language, but not always because you can you know, have uh, Italian documents in French archives and and so on and so forth. Um, when available, it will also give you the, the date, the period um, from which that, uh, uh, the, the documents of the descriptions belong to. And then uh, the score is uh, uh, from, um, from the highest to the lowest, um, how, how relevant uh, the machine, the tool thinks that description is to your uh, query. Can we go to the next slide? Um, okay, yeah, so that, that I just said, um, so there's no need to, to repeat. Um, so again, this, this we already uh, said, and yes, um, when searching for entities, you also see the links to Wikipedia and VIAF in case it matches to the keywords at the top of the table. <laughs> so Kirsten, I'll give it back to you for the uh, next step in the tools development. Okay, thank you very much, Marta. Um, so, yes, just to, to give you a little bit of an idea of what we are thinking about um, 
adding in, in terms of functionality. So at the moment, um, as you might have seen from Marta's uh, part of the presentation, the tool is concentrating on the search functionalities. Um, but what we want to extend to is to actually also be able to flag material specifically that is related to certain topics in order to prepare the possibility that these topics actually end up being in the material uh, so that we can also make use of them um, in the Arcos Portal Europe um, when we present the documents to our users. Um, at the moment, we haven't decided yet uh, who would do the actual tagging. So if that is something that we only do on the aggregation level in our central system, or if this is something that we are giving back to the content provider, so to the archival institutions, um, in order for them to then integrate that at the source. Um, that, of course, would be the ideal situation, because then that means um, this information can be made available uh, in all different kinds of contexts. So the archives can use it themselves in their own websites. Uh, they can use it with Archives Portal Europe. They can use it um, when providing data to Europeana or to other aggregation processes, projects that they might be part of. Um, we also want to employ some additional taxonomies from other linked open data vocabularies. So for example, looking at geo names for names of places uh, or the library of congress subject headings um, of course we want to extend the data set to eventually eventually include everything that is in archives portal europe and we also want to extend the languages that the tool can work with ideally uh, the implementation um, of the tool would be twofold so uh, being used by researchers um, to find and flag documents relevant to their research um, and not, not necessarily being bound to existing lists of curated topics but essentially identifying also new topics that are of interest um, with the possibility to bookmark these documents and to save them in the user accounts that you can create on Arcos Portal Europe and essentially kind of providing an extension uh, to the usual keyword searches and on the other hand to also give our content providers a tool at hand that helps them to review and refine their existing topic mapping mappings um, to find the documents that they might want to tag with a specific topic um, and that aren't yet and to also um, create a resulting list of topic relevant documents that they can then work with at the source in their own contexts. If you want to follow the development uh, on GitHub, um, we've got all the information there under Archives Portal Europe Foundation slash topic minus detection. Um, so you can see the project status there and the next steps. So any issues that we are planned and are currently working on. And you will also find the code for the tool there, of course, and to some extent the training data that we used initially. And this is the point where I will stop sharing and where we can maybe open the floor for general questions before we actually go into the testing session. <laughs> 